Beyond Hollywood's glamour, there's always chaos. Today, we're exposing Tinseltown's most notorious figures, the 15 nastiest actors to ever grace the silver screen. Shall we find out? I forget to tell you later. I had a really good time. Number 15, Julia Roberts. Despite having charming appearances in the media, not all stars possess the same level of grace and kindness behind the scenes. Julia Roberts is a sad example. While many fans repute her as America's sweetheart and a woman who can do no wrong, there is more than one reason to believe that her reality is totally different. Despite her numerous accolades and celebrated career, Julia Roberts has also been a favorite subject of controversy. Over the years, she's been renowned for a nasty reputation for not getting along with her co-stars. And to buttress this, do you remember her performance as Tinkerbell in Steven Spielberg's Hook? During the shoot, her behavior was so ugly that she was referred to as Tinker Hell by the other members of the set. To be fair, she did have a good alibi. She was working on the back of a tough breakout with Kiefer Sutherland after he cheated on her with an exotic dancer. But this perfectly sets the tone for why she's on our list today. Because while she knew firsthand how emotionally damaging it was to have a cheating partner, she kind of did the same to another woman. And yeah, it was pretty ugly. At the time, she met and fell in love with her husband Motor, who was married to another woman, Vera Steinberg, who still had deep feelings for him. She didn't even want to get a divorce despite contemplating it. Did that make Robert slow her roll, though? Certainly not. In fact, she took a nasty dig at her. She rocked denim jeans, a black coat, and a white t-shirt with the phrase, A low Vera on it. A nasty pun, yes. A clear dig at Vera, of course. The aftermath was nasty. Branding Julia as a husband stealer, Vera swore to never forgive her. She claimed that the actress was desperate to get married to her ex-husband, and that she hoped the new couple wouldn't even last a year together. But while most fans have forgiven and forgotten Julia's scandal, abuse is a different story. Such is the case for the next guy. One more. Last one. After this, we let all sick and endangered animals die horrible deaths. Agreed? Number 14, Chevy Chase. There are several hard pills in Hollywood to swallow. The best aren't always recognized. Beauty is more important than you'd think, and Chevy Chase is one of the nastiest figures you'd ever see. Sure, he's a comedy king. Over the years, he's made us all laugh with his wits and quick remarks, so it's okay to be surprised that he's on our list. You see, Chase actually had a pretty great start. He was part of Saturday Night Live's original cast and was the star of a couple of household franchises. Remember the Fletch movies and the National Lampoon's Vacation series? And how can we forget that he was part of NBC's cult classic, Community? So exactly how did things get so sour? For starters, Chase suffered from severe health issues. He became dependent on prescription painkillers and had a long-standing case of alcohol dependency. But don't take these personal issues as a pass to his nasty reputation. From inciting fistfights to straight-up walking out of sets, Chase was a difficult man to work with. And don't even get us started on how a lot of his witty remarks walk the fine line between being crude and offensive. And to make things worse, Chase was more worried about his next cold opening than being a part of the team. He'd openly brag about his wealth, criticize the cast, and boss them around like he's some king. It was so bad that he became known as the hole around the office. Now, you're probably thinking this infamous reputation would be good enough for good old Chase to find the errors in his ways, aren't you? Ah, uh, no sir, that's only the tip of the iceberg. Because instead of getting bigger and better, Chase kept falling down, making comedy enemies everywhere he went. Show by show, project by project, decade by decade, everybody hates Chevy Chase. But hey, nothing's going to prepare you for what he did next. You remember Tom Sweeney, right? SNL's very first openly gay performer? Yeah, Chase made a nasty comment about him involving AIDS, and no, it's worse than you'd think. In the 2014 book on the uncensored history of Saturday Night Live, Sweeney said that Chase wanted him to say he had AIDS in front of the camera and that the crew weighs him every week. How tone deaf could that be? But he didn't just stop there. Chase also made sadistic remarks to Sweeney by telling him that he could lick his popsicle, if you know what I mean. And when the cast called him out for his errors and demanded an apology, Chase became so furious. Curious about what Chase had to say about his bad reputation over the years? In a CBS interview in 2022, Chase was asked about his infamous reputation and why everyone thinks of him as a jerk. 
but perhaps unsurprisingly, he was unapologetic. He said he was who he was, and he didn't care what others thought of him. His remarks pretty much sum up the fact that he's a major jerk in real life. But before you raise your pitchforks, you might want to slow your roll because the next guy is we're going to show you is even worse. What is your purpose? I'm here for you. Then you must know my name. Number 13, Russell Crowe. While you might remember Russell Crowe's recent performance in The Pope's Exorcist, don't you dare fall for his chiseled face and blue eyes because he can be a pretty big meanie. Take his arrest in June 2005 as a prime example. Then, mobile devices weren't exactly the technological marvels they are today. But he was at a hotel in New York and needed to place a call to his girl in Australia nonetheless. Maybe he missed her, wanted to tell her something pretty important, or was yearning to give her all the details of a bad complimentary breakfast. But in any case, he wasn't able to reach her, and big old Russell became pissed. So pissed that he actually hurled a phone at one of the employees in anger. And that's just one occurrence. For years, his frequent angry outbursts and public displays of temper have been extensively covered in sensationalist tabloid publications. And yeah, it's pretty sad to hear because he's such a multifaceted artist. He's a musician, director, and Oscar-winning actor. They don't call him the pride of Australia for no reason. But if it weren't for his temper, he'd have been a perfect catch. Where do we even start? Ah uh, yes, in 2002, The Guardian shook the halls of Hollywood when it reported that Crow pinned BBC producer Malcolm Jerry against the wall of a storage closet. Apparently, the actor was furious that his BAFTA award acceptance speech for A Beautiful Mind was cut short from the broadcast. He verbally abused Jerry and boldly stated that he would never work in Hollywood. And although he did apologize for his actions, the damage was already done. But if you found the whole debacle to be shocking, wait till we tell you about the Azalea Banks incident that ended with a nasty police report. You see, just when Crow was starting to paint a new name for himself, his ugly habits came calling yet again. According to her, Crow called her the N-word, choked her, threw her out of the room, and like that wasn't already enough, he spat on her. Humiliating, yes, shocking, of course, but that's not even Crow's craziest tale. During the production of Gladiator in 2000, Crow was evidently upset that the studio wasn't paying his assistants what he considered a fair wage. But instead of calmly settling the issue in a civilized manner, Crow threatened to kill producer Branko Lustig with his bare hands in the middle of the night. Imagine lying in bed only to receive such a nasty call from your lead actor. Yikes! And if you think he probably used a jocular tone when making the threat, you've got another thing coming. Lustig was so afraid that he called Steven Spielberg, whose DreamWorks studio was backing the film, and asked him to leave the production. We don't blame him, though. Crow can be quite scary sometimes, but not as much as this guy. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long... Number 12. Alec Guinness. When you think of Alec Guinness, you're probably thinking fierce, bold, and smart. Basically like his portrayal of the original Obi-Wan Kenobi. With his class and poise, Guinness grew to become the quintessential Englishman, or at least on paper. Off-screen, the thespian was a nasty control freak, an alleged misogynist, and a borderline narcissist who seemingly spent every waking hour undermining his long-suffering wife. He wouldn't let anyone make any decision that contradicted what he thought was right. And no, it wasn't only for big decisions. Even little things like meal preferences had to be decided by him. To cut him some slack, his upbringing was sad. His childhood was marked by an absent father and a mother who was a drunken thief, and his animosity towards her later evolved into a form of misogyny, a reflexive one, if you may. As an adult, he openly resented and belittled his wife, Marula, whom he viewed as unintelligent. Strangely, Guinness was aware of his own unpleasant behavior and attempted to suppress it, but it often surfaced nonetheless. But what we truly find intriguing is that Marula, for her part, largely ignored her husband's nastiness. Why, you may ask? Well, we have no idea. In a letter to Christopher Sinclair Stevenson, Marula confessed that Guinness often rejected her love and humiliated her and their son in public from time to time. But that's not even the most shocking thing. Multiple accounts reveal that Guinness felt threatened by an eerie feeling that Marula was stepping out of his shadow. He wanted her to abandon her acting career, mocked the spelling mistakes in her letters, and openly criticized her cooking in front of dinner guests. So the fact that she still remained all forgiving in a long marriage is a big surprise. Could it have been just a classic case of Stockholm Syndrome? Maybe. But in any case, Guinness is inarguably one of the weirdest characters in Hollywood's history, and not in a good way.
Number 11, Lindsay Lohan. Yep, up next is Lindsay Lohan. You didn't think we'd make a list without her, did you? For many years, Lohan unavoidably made headlines for her substance abuse, DUI problems, and occasional rehab. But those aren't exactly the reasons why she's on our list today. No, sir, it's all about her nasty attitude. Now, you might want to brace yourself because this is going to sound pretty weird. At her Lohan Beach house in Greece, the actress made headlines for all the bad reasons. She threatened to fire waitresses at the nightclub for not wearing matching shoes, and no, she wasn't joking. She posted about it, and when a fan asked if she was kidding, she made it clear that she was serious about it. But that's not even close to her greatest sin. Remember when disturbing footage of Lohan broke the internet regarding a migrant family? While partying in a dark club, she encountered the family on the street and identified them as Syrian refugees. But instead of letting them be, she approached the family, told them to follow her, and when they refused, she did something simply unforgivable. She claimed that the parents were trafficking the kids. And it's so disgusting because in 2017, she alleged that she had been racially profiled and frightened by a woman at London Heathrow's airport, who asked her to take off her headscarf. So how could she do worse to another family? It's the height of hypocrisy and frankly irritating. The next woman on our list, however, was one cool maniac. You want it on? Doesn't matter. I detest cheap sentiment. Number 10, Betty Davis. Proudly representing the quintessential Hollywood queen, Betty Davis is simply the last of her kind. She was smart, carried herself with grace and poise, and never suffered for fools. But get on her wrong side, and all hell would be let loose. No one dared to go against her, and for good reason. She could go from 0 to 100 in only a few seconds. She once went for a meal with director Herschel Doherty, who made the mistake of wagging his finger in Davis's face. The aftermath, a heated display of rage, had half the people in the restaurant run away with their tails between their legs. And then, in seconds, she flipped the switch back to her usual self like nothing had happened. But the signs were clear right from the start of her career. She had a confrontational personality and never shied away from verbal fights. It was so bad that, despite being one of the greatest actresses of all time, Davis experienced rejection from a New York theater troupe called the Manhattan Civic Repertory Theater. Their reasons? Her and I quote, frivolous and insincere attitude. And don't even get us started on her unwavering ability to hold a grudge. Decades after missing out on an Oscar for her adaptation of Somerset Maugham's most famous book, she was still fuming. But the peak of the drama came in the form of a heated love triangle. Davis fell in love with her co-star, Frank Atone, who was already dating Joan Crawford, a name that you'll be seeing more soon enough. Despite being married herself, Davis went all out to seduce Tone. It was game over at that point. Not even Crawford's pressure to rush an engagement matters. Davis eventually got Tone under her spell, with Crawford swearing to never forgive her. It's safe to say she never got the memo, though. Davis loved feuds and grudges. It brought out a villainy side of her that she never dared to tame. Not to rehash every detail, but Davis once spent an entire movie manipulating the crew to get Crawford fired. Barely four days into filming, she had already made friends with the local press and crew with one diabolical strategy in mind. Isolate and destroy Crawford. It kind of worked, though. Crawford soon became an island, often eating lunch alone. But speaking of evil master plans, can you guess who's next? about Carol and Judd. They're getting married right away. Oh, that's wonderful. I was hoping they wouldn't wait. Oh, I'm so happy for them. I don't know what Number nine, Joan Crawford. Yep, you got it. Our next stop through Hollywood's nastiness is none other than Joan Crawford. To the outside, she seemingly had it all. She was beautiful, held three Oscar nominations, and was at her peak. But as you probably already know, there's always more than meets the eye in Tinseltown. Straight off a wild fanfic, Crawford had a steamy one-night stand with Marilyn Monroe, but that's not exactly nasty, especially in modern times. The real reason she's on our list today is because she was an egomaniac who was heavily consumed by jealousy, and to top it all off, she wasn't exactly the mother of the year. In the infamous book Mommy Dearest by Christina, the adopted daughter of Crawford, the full picture of the actress was painted, and make no mistake, it wasn't a pretty sight. The revelations included Crawford telling Christina her birth mother was deceased when she actually wasn't. Moments of Crawford having a breakdown upon discovering her daughter's dresses on wire hangers, and chilling accounts of the physical abuse Crawford sometimes inflicted on her children. To be fair, there is a bit of an unresolved dispute. Two of Crawford's other adopted children denied the account. Nevertheless, the answer to who's right or who's wrong is in Christina's favor. Crawford's erratic behavior is well documented. 
She treads dubious channels to adopt her children, leading to one of them being reclaimed by his angry birth mother just days after adoption. And there's still the bitter feud with the equally terrifying Betty Davis, which ended with Crawford sabotaging her own. There's also her bitter rivalry with the equally strange Betty Davis, which peaked when Crawford deliberately undermined her own film's box office to prevent Davis from winning her third Oscar. Indeed, Hollywood is a wild jungle, but perhaps not as wild as this next guy. For God's sake, Marianne, three typos. Three! Christ, I can do better Thomas Gibson's reputation as one of the nastiest actors in Hollywood history precedes him, and his tenure on Criminal Minds was riddled with controversy and discord. Famous for his long-standing demanding nature, Gibson expected the entire production to cater to his every whim, and this caused friction and tension on the set. His ego just couldn't be tamed. But it wasn't just his diva-like behavior that earned Gibson his notorious reputation. His explosive temper was the stuff of legend culminating in a series of shocking incidents that ultimately led to his dismissal from the show. From physically assaulting an assistant director during a shoot, to getting behind the wheel under the influence and picking up a DUI, Gibson's behavior left producers fuming. And when he infamously crossed the line by kicking writer-producer Virgil Williams, it was the final straw for Criminal Minds. To put it simply, Gibson's troublemaking and hostility track record made him a liability that the show simply couldn't afford to keep around. Putting an end to his tumultuous tenure on the show was the only option. Following his firing, Gibson's career crumbled like a deck of cards. No one wanted to work with him. It just wasn't worth it. To date, he's only been able to work on two subsequent projects. His fall from grace stands as a stark reminder that talent alone is not enough to sustain a career in an industry where professionalism and respect are often paramount. Number 7. Terry Hatcher Remember when Terry Hatcher blew our minds away with her portrayal of Susan Mayer on Desperate Housewives? Well, it turns out that she was totally in tune with her character. In fact, we dare say that her character's persona is so identical to her actual life that it blurs the lines between fiction and reality. And no, it's not a compliment. Known for her icy demeanor and standoffish attitude, Hatcher made even the simplest scenes a challenge to film. It sounds awkwardly similar to Thomas Gibson, right? Both actors created an atmosphere of tension and discomfort on set, but guess what? It wasn't just her demeanor that rubbed her co-stars the wrong way. Hatcher's strained relationship with her fellow Housewives cast members were an open secret, with rumors of feuds and conflicts swirling behind the scenes. So when the time came for the ladies to show their appreciation to the crew with an end-of-series gift, Hatcher found herself conspicuously absent from the gesture. It was a stark reminder of just how alienated she had become from her supposed family on the show. Now, while you might be thinking frozen out of the cast's camaraderie would have woken Hatcher, it actually turned out to be the tip of the iceberg in a long-standing feud that had simmered beneath the surface for years. Instead of being a team player, she doubled up on her coldness toward the other stars. It was almost like revenge on her. But of course, it didn't last for long. With no true ally on set, she became the pariah among the close-knit ensemble. In the end, her inability to foster positive relationships with her colleagues left her isolated and ostracized, serving as a cautionary tale of the perils of letting personal conflicts spill over into the workplace. So before you feel bad for her, remember that she brought it all on herself. If she could only tune down her ego a bit, she'd likely be off Santa's naughty list. But hey, perhaps we should keep our advice for the next actor on our list. He was a real doozy. Number 6. Bruce Willis Just take a look at that tough-looking man for a minute or two. Does he particularly seem like a jolly good fellow to be around? Don't be shy, you can be honest. Bruce Willis isn't exactly the nicest guy you'd meet in Hollywood. He knows it, his diehard fans know it, everyone knows it. But what we find most amusing about him is that he doesn't seem to care much either. In fact, he seems to be embracing his role as a villain quite nicely. Just like several of the actors we've talked about today, Bruce Willis has been ruining his reputation as time passes. And as we speak, he's already widely considered one of the most difficult movie stars to work with. His fall from grace story didn't come at the start of his career, though. No, sir, it came much later. Back in 2010, Bruce Willis was called out by Kevin Smith, who directed the actor in the Cop Out movie for his on-set behavior. 
Summing Bruce up as an actual nightmare to work with, he marked the experience as soul-crushing because the actor was anything but a team player. But before you think Smith was exaggerating, or perhaps taking a dig at an innocent man he had issues with, it's worth adding that he's not the only one who feels that way. A couple of other directors have also voiced complaints about Willis' unsolicited and misguided input regarding their directing style. So you see, it only makes sense for Kevin Smith to call him a flipping d hmm ck Yeah, he actually said it, but without the censor, of course. Nonetheless, three years after Smith's call-out, another famous actor in the form of Sylvester Stallone spoke in bad faith about his experience working with Bruce Willis. Justifying his drop from the Expendables 3 movie, Mr. Stallone claimed Willis was both greedy and lazy, and that it was a sure formula for an inevitable career failure. But given how Willis was still featured in a myriad of movies, with some of them being big hits, do you think he has finally changed for the better? Who knows, he may still be treading a path that's doomed to fail. But before you ponder that food for thought, make sure you subscribe in this channel and turn the post notification on so you'll be the first to know when we make another awesome video like this. But back to the nasty talk. Can you guess who's up next? Here's a hint. She's got an angelic voice. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Number 5. Leah Michelle. Admit it, you're pretty surprised to see Leah Michelle make the list. We get it. She's smart, pretty, a good actress, and knows her way around a camera. But here's the kicker. She's a pretty mean girl. Remember when she stole the show on the set of Glee? She never failed to blow our minds away. Her character was great, and her chemistry with some of the co-stars, especially at the start, was electric. But don't take this to mean the cast of Glee reflected the show's name when the cameras weren't rolling. Far from it. Leah Michelle, who portrayed one of the singing stars, Rachel Berry, reportedly adopted the ruthless mentality of a genuine high school diva when it came to her behavior on set. Wondering how? Well, multiple reports indicated that Michelle was super rude towards everyone involved in the production, causing the cast and crew to wait extensively until she was ready to start shooting. Crew members also revealed that Michelle declined to interact with junior members of the Glee staff. And on top of that, co-star Samantha Ware revealed that Michelle made her first television gig a living hell due to Michelle's repeated cases of traumatic microaggressions towards her. In fact, she even threatened to go number two in Samantha's wig. Nevertheless, the next event is going to shock you to your core. In her memoir, Sorry Not Sorry, Dreams, Mistakes, and Growing Up, Nea Riviera mentioned that Michelle wasn't happy about Samantha sharing her limelight. In a fit of rage, she iced out everyone on the set and became meaner, it got so bad that she didn't even say a single word to Rivera for all of season 6. But it's safe to say that Leah knew she was in the wrong all along. She has since apologized to the offended parties and declared that she has reflected on her shortcomings, accepting growth and change. We only wish her apology came prior to being called out, though. One might say she was forced to do some damage control. This time, well, this time it's for keeps. Number 4. Val Kilmer When you've had a career as stretched and well-versed as Val Kilmer, it's only expected that you'd pick up some kisses and enemies along the way. The villains in this case, several of Kilmer's ex-girlfriends have openly called out the actor for his erratic behavior, but we guess that makes them the heroes in this story. But they're not the only ones. Director Joel Schumacher once berated his behavior towards a crew member for being rude, childish, and inappropriate. And instead of being apologetic and remorseful, he ghosted Schumacher. For two weeks, he didn't say a single word to his own director. And his offset antics weren't great either. In 2007, Val Kilmer made headlines for his impolite behavior toward fellow passengers on an American Eagle flight from New York to Washington, D.C. He completely refused to speak or make eye contact with anyone. At one point, when the flight attendant asked if he'd like anything to drink, Val completely ignored him. His male assistant had to respond on his behalf. He was such a rude, pompous jerk. Through the years, he has consistently been tagged as being difficult to work with and has made lots of enemies in the industry, actors and executives alike. And don't even get us started on how his attitude on set has made him lose a handful of jobs. On multiple occasions, he fought with camera operators and wardrobe managers. He was so bad that even Richard Stanley, a director who worked on the island of Dr. Moreau, claimed that Val would arrive on set and instantly start an argument. But before you sound surprised, you might want to hear his shocking reason. When Kilmer was asked to make an objective assessment of his nasty behavior almost throughout his career, he only said he cared about being in front of a camera and acting. 
He didn't care about his crew, he didn't care about the money, and he didn't even care about the film itself. Kilmer's candid acknowledgement of his past behavior and his willingness to be a better person after his personal struggles with throat cancer offer a glimpse of hope for the future. In the end, Val Kilmer's journey is complex and nuanced, marked by moments of brilliance and turbulence alike. He may be a better person moving forward, but for now, his reputation precedes him. You might want to brace yourself, though, because he's nothing compared to who's next. I'm losing command. I'm losing the Enterprise. Ship is hanging on and on. <laughs> Number 3. William Shatner when William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy started together on Star Trek for their portrayals of Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, the duo became inseparable. Fans couldn't get enough of their friendship, and why wouldn't they? The chemistry was electric, and the best part was that it wasn't for the camera. They genuinely loved each other and enjoyed each other's company. They were the best of friends. But notice how we keep using the past tense. Shatner was reportedly the jealous type, and he got upset at the sheer amount of fan mail that Nimoy received. Soon he became insecure. At first, Shatner was the star of the show and enjoyed the most attention, but suddenly, Nimoy and his Mr. Spock characters were offsetting the order. And to top it off, Nimoy was nominated for a Supporting Actor Emmy Award in all of the show's three seasons. It became clear at that point, Shatner was no longer the star attraction. In a bid to save his face and get back his crown, Shatner did something nasty. He stole dialogue from Nimoy and other actors to ensure Captain Kirk had the most screen time, thus elevating his own significance. Yet, that was only the tip of the iceberg. Shatner also reportedly feuded with other actors in the series, such as Nichelle Nichols and George Takai. Obsessed with his own status, he allegedly threw fits to ensure he was the center of attention and in control. But do you know what makes it worse? Nimoy was Shatner's best man at his fourth wedding. He broke the sacred code, and the friendship never remained the same. In one of Leonard Nimoy's final interviews on television, Piers Morgan asked him if he regularly spoke with Shatner following their heated fallout. Unsurprisingly, he replied no. With a cold look, he further stated that they no longer have a close relationship. And given that Nimoy died not so long after that interview, it means that neither he nor Shatner buried the hatchet. It's a truly devastating end to one of the best brooches in Hollywood history. If only Shatner wasn't so selfish. Number 2. Steven Seagal Steven Seagal's appearances on the big screen are becoming increasingly rare nowadays. It's been years since he had a hit at the box office. But one night, he argued that it was because he had embraced a career in law enforcement. But the truth is starkly different. And no, it's not because of his acting skills. He's quite great in that department. His crazy decline to fame has more to do with his personality. Whether it was in public or on set, he was a total nightmare to everyone. He was highly critical of others, he was arrogant, and he often used his towering physique to intimidate and injure other cast members, intentionally. According to multiple accounts, he slammed comedian John Leguizano hard against a wall simply for laughing at him, because you know, comedians aren't allowed to be funny. Similar stories were echoed by other actors and stuntmen, and just to show you how diabolical Seagal was, one of his favorite means of showcasing displeasure with another man was to kick him in the nuts. He was tall, strong, quick, and also skilled at fighting. His untrained opponents could do little to defend themselves. But don't take this to mean the brunt of his wrath was only felt by men. Even ladies suffered from time to time, albeit in a different manner, a more evil one. According to numerous reports, Stephen was also accused of sexually assaulting women on set and female co-stars for many years. Who in his right mind wouldn't hate him? He acted like a literal madman. If it weren't for the next guy on our list, he would have been the worst actor to ever grace Hollywood. They put a gun to her. As we stand here, she's on an autopsy slab, getting cut open by scalpels and chest spreaders, and you're talking to me about domestic fucking violence. Number 1. Sean Penn When you hear the name Sean Penn, what's the first thing that comes to mind? His awesome theatrics, his undeniable presence on set, or perhaps the fact that he's an Oscar-winning actor. In any case, you must have forgotten one thing, his disgraceful, disgusting, and traumatizing antics both on and off the screen. Penn has made headlines through the years for some of the most shocking and controversial behavior and comments you'll ever see from such a top celebrity. Where do we even start? Ah yes, his violent relationship with his ex-wife, Madonna. Back in the 1980s when the pair were married, the relationship was anything but a bed of roses. He once hit her across the head with a baseball bat, hospitalizing her in the process. 
and being so protective of her heartthrob, Madonna refuses to press charges since Penn was already facing 60 days in jail for assault and for reckless driving. He served 33 days of the 60-day sentence. But that wasn't his first dance with the law. In 1986, Penn was charged with misdemeanor. He battered Walensky, a songwriter best known for his work with the band Rufus, at Helena's nightclub in Los Angeles. His reason? Penn wrongly accused him of trying to kiss Madonna. Nonetheless, his bravado was probably just an excuse to act like a maniac because he didn't seem to love his wife. Or at least, that's what we think. Because who in his right mind would hit the Queen of Hollywood with a baseball bat, especially when he claims to love her? And that wouldn't even be the last time he'd abuse her. In 1989, Madonna reported to the police how Penn would usually lock her alone in the bedroom while boldly declaring he owned her. The full reports were even scarier. He tried to bind her hands with an electric lamp and cord, and when she ran out of the bedroom in fear, he chased her, caught her, bound her to the chair, and then tried to cut off her hair. What is this, a horror movie? The maniac didn't even stop there. He left her in that position, took a trip to the bar to get some booze, and on his return, promised to only untie her if she performed a degrading sex act on him. Poor Madonna was battered, weak, and helpless. Lieutenant Bill McSweeney recalled her face as swollen in tears with a bleeding lip. He barely recognized her. But again, Madonna repaid his cruelty with kindness. She urged the district attorney to drop the charges against Penn, who was initially charged with felony domestic assault. Eventually, he pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor. Madonna cut ties with him shortly after. But hey, if you thought that was the end of his disappointing attitude, think again. Penn, who was 54 at the time, faced an arrest for attempted murder. He was found suspending a paparazzo over the balcony railing of his ninth floor hotel during a filming of Shanghai Surprise in Macau. Additionally, he was charged with battery and vandalism in 2010 after kicking a paparazzo and damaging his camera, which was recorded on video. Make no mistake, if there's one man who's hands down the worst, nastiest, meanest, and most unpleasant Hollywood actor, it has to be Sean Penn. No argument. This concludes our list of 15 of the nastiest actors in Hollywood history. If you made it this far, then chances are you fell in love with this video. And if we're right, make sure to like and comment on which of these figures shocked you the most. While you're at that, you might want to watch the video currently displaying on your screen. You're going to love it.